Hi there, I'm Brad Fraser and I'm Spencer Shunk. And you're watching Old, Old Movies, Movies for, for Young people. people. Today we're talking about Prick Up Your Ears, directed by Stephen Frears from 1987. And this movie, um, well, it's not exactly a perfect movie, but it has a lot of resonances for me. And in fact, when I started showing Spencer movies, this was the first movie I showed you. The first we ever watched. The, the plot of this film uh, concerns, well, it's, it's from a biography by John Lair about Joe Orton, who was a, a huge uh, British playwright who basically died right as he was, his fame was peaking. Yes. You're in good shape. It's the way it's... When I die, I want people to say he was the most perfectly developed playwright of his day. I don't think we're giving anything away by saying this because it gives you the ending of the movie at yeah. the beginning anyway. His lover, Kenneth Hallowell, played by Alfred Molina, who's quite jealous of uh, Joe's success and has been mistreated. He kills Joe in his sleep and then kills himself. The story is told, as uh, Spencer said, uh, sort of in reverse. It starts with the murder and then we meet the uh, Ken and... Uh, and Joe, who are beautifully played by the two actors portraying them. And what, what the movie really is, is the story of a relationship where inequality becomes part of the relationship. Movement, denunciation, breath control, it's also wildly dated, don't you agree? Uh, yes. Yes. Still, I suppose the beginners find it useful. Are you new to them? Hardly. A small legacy enabled me to spend several weekends at the Strand Palace. Hotels are a closed book to me. Oh, you'll like the Strand Palace. Perhaps we might venture there one evening for coffee. It's the story of the two men and, and how, as Joe Starr rises, Kenneth, Kenneth Starr falls. Because he expects to be the big star. He comes from money, he's got the education, he's kind of taking Joe under his wing. Exactly. Right, But it all really flips on Kenneth and Kenneth just can't fucking figure out why. Neither of us seems to have any family photos. I'm an orphan. I always wanted to be an orphan. I could have been if it hadn't have been for my parents. My mother died when I was a boy. She was stung on the tongue by a wasp. One minute we were just sitting down to breakfast. Ten minutes later she was dead. That still leaves your dad. Him. Put his head in the gas oven when I was 18. Initially, they are partners, they write together, they get in trouble together, they're arrested for defacing oh, library oh. books. They, they take library books and they paste rude pictures into them and rude captions and stuff. And they actually went to prison for defacing library books, if you can imagine. The probation officer has suggested that you are both frustrated authors. Well, if you're so clever at making fun of what more talented people have written, you should have a shot at writing books yourselves. You won't find that such a pushover. Share malice and destruction, the pair of you. I sentence you both to six months. Fucking okay, Ada. That was your idea. Vanessa yeah. Redgrave plays the uh, agent who discovers him and who encourages him, and it's a beautiful little role that she quits very nicely. Would it be rude to inquire how you're managing to live? Uh, national assistance. Three pounds ten a week. I'm afraid I've just come out of jail. Excellent. Papers love all that. There's a, a wonderful scene where they are uh, at, at an opening, but everybody keeps talking to, to Kenneth about Joe mm -hmm. and, and giving Joe all the credit, and you get to see how what a huge toll this takes on Kenneth. So what does that entail? It entails washing his underwear, it entails taking his jumpers to sketches, it entails poaching his fucking eggs, and it entails reading his manuscripts, only to find every single thing I've ever thought or said has been included. That must be very rewarding. If you're referring, madam, to the occasional bout of mutual masturbation, no, it is not rewarding at all. That sense of inequality is there from the beginning. Even though we, they say the things that right. Kenneth is the one with the power <clears throat> and blah, blah, blah. You never really see that. That's never really proven. Joe is the dominant partner throughout and is not a particularly sympathetic character. But then neither is Hallowell. In fact, no. Hallowell is a, a really dislikable character from the very yeah. beginning. I don't want to go away. I just want to go to the awards. I could, look, Joe Wharton and guest. I'd behave. I wouldn't say a word, I promise. No. Why? Because it's for me. I wrote it. I gave you the title. Okay, so when they have awards for titles, you can go to that. Joe Wharton won the... Um, London Evening Standard Award. London Evening Standard Award for best, most promising playwright in 1967 or 68. And who and else won that? I won that. I won that in 1991. 
And there's a wonderful sequence in the movie where he's just won his award, Kenneth isn't there with him, and he decides to go into a public bathroom and have sex. and then a total orgy results. And I thought, God damn, why didn't I get that when I got my <laughs> London Evening Standard Award? Because I never got it. They never really have good sex. And the only time they have good sex is I when they're having with Arab sex. boys. My life's beginning to run to a timetable no member of the royal family would tolerate. I'm improving. You are. Having it sucked regularly is turning you back into a human being. Oh, who's this? No one knows we're here. I gave the Beatles office the number, just in case. It's Brian Epstein. So the Beatles make an appearance. Joe Orton yeah. wrote a movie for the Beatles that actually opened with the four of them in bed together. That was as far as their management got when they were reading it. They commissioned the script. <laughs> they read the first scene, the first line where the boys are in bed together and threw it away. That climactic scene uh, where uh, Alfred Molina is talking to himself and revving himself up for the act when we know Joe's sleeping in the bed behind him, that's, uh, I, that's unforgettable to me. I lost both my parents. By the time I was 20, I was going bald. I'm a homosexual. In the way of circumstances and background, I had everything an artist could possibly want. You do everything better than me. You even sleep better than me. The problem I have is for everything we're saying about it, it should be a better movie. It really should. And why is that? You're not really devastated no. by the murder. I mean, you understand it, but you, we haven't invested mm -hmm. in either character enough to be really emotionally affected by it. And I think it's a problem with the structure. And I think what they did was they followed the structure of Lars' book too closely. Also, I don't know if we get from this movie how big of a star Joe Orton was or could have been. I don't think we, you know, we don't get just like uh, how sad it is that he was just taken out at that point. And what about the more casual viewer of your generation? How do you think they would respond to this? Uh, I think it's a tough sell. It's, uh, it's very dark and there's not exactly a lot of hope in the film. And, and uh, there also could redemption. be more humor. That's, that's the it other thing that I have humor. to say because yeah. Joe Orton is hysterically funny. If you've read yeah. his plays, if you've read What the Butler Saw, which is that's probably his greatest play, it's an amazing, amazing farce yeah. and there's a, there's a total lack of humor in this movie and the kind of dark double-edged humor that Orton himself dealt with and I think if there had been more of that in the writing it would have been a more successful film however I'm going to recommend it I'm gonna say if you have any interest in good acting or the period or people who kill their lovers you probably want to watch this movie and I'd agree all right and that's it for old movies, for, movies for, for young, young people, people. My plays are about getting away with it, and the ones who get away with it are the guilty. It's the innocents who get it in the neck. But that all seems pretty true to life to me, not a fantasy at all. I've got away with it so far, and I'm going to go on. Thank you.